to Ozzy's Oddities, everybody. I've been gone for a while, but I really haven't been gone. I've been busy working in that garden where I wasn't supposed to be gardening this year. They've been keeping me so busy around here cutting lawn, I haven't had time to have fun with you guys. But today, today I'm supposed to be cutting lawn, but I decided we can do something better than that. So, a while back we showed you a corn sheller. And we found out, in fact, we showed you a couple ways to shell corn, but there's more than one or two ways to shell corn. And today I'm going to show you something that, that we dug out. We are going to shell corn with three different machines today. And we showed you this uh, smaller corn sheller in an earlier film. And it's similar to the, what they call the Black Hawk, or the one you can still buy today. I can't remember the name of it now. Maximizer. Maximizer that's sold by layman's or somebody. Anyway, it's the most common one you find today because it's easy. You can just mount it on a barrel or a box or a pail, anything heavy, and it'll catch the corn as you shell it. But it's an interesting sheller. We use it with the grinder here at the Maple Tree Forge Milling Company. And we use it for demonstrations. We've taken it all over for engine shows. But we're gonna just review it a little bit and then I'm going to show you a couple other shellers too today and let's start let's take a look at this one again just to review now it's a hand crank corn sheller has a cog wheel with teeth on it to take the corn off the, the cob it separates separates the cob from the corn First thing we got to do is get the husk off the corn. Remember, always put the ear in. Point first, butt out. There it goes, going down. Watch the ear flip in. And the cob comes out this end. Now we've done this several times before and we get a nice nice shelled corn and it works good. Works real good. Many manufacturers making that today. You can find them all over the place. Not too hard. It's portable. We take it to shows. Let the kids crank on it all day. When we had corn, we don't have we don't grow corn anymore here, so we got to find it when we can. But let's move on. Let's move on to a, another corn sheller. I got to bring my corn harvest with me here. Now this corn sheller here is a little bit more rare. It's called uh, the Burl corn sheller. Manufactured by the Golds Manufacturing Company, Seneca Falls, New York. This is a number two right hand corn sheller. All cast iron and steel constructed. That's what kinda kind of made it interesting because the wood ones generally they fell apart in time, rotted away. This one here, the farmers just left them sit outside by the chicken coop. But anyway, it caught my eye one time and I thought, wow, that's kind of interesting. And I've only in our area, I've only seen two other ones like it here. A friend of mine from La Crosse, Wisconsin had one. And I stumbled on one at a, at a garage sale one time. And that one went to Colorado. But that one was busted up. That's the important thing. These old shallows, because they're cast, and they're thin, they're less than a quarter inch thick. There's a, and if they tip over, a lot of cracks, and you'll see welds on them. And the one at the garage sale was all welded up, so I had to pass down that. But anyway, hand crank it has a flywheel. At one time, somebody put a, a pulley on here to run with a stationary gas engine, so he didn't want to crank it, apparently. But that's why they put a flywheel on, because once you get that turning, I haven't greased it for 
nine years. But just to tell you a little bit more about this, this uh, Thomas Burrell, he started manufacturing corn shellers back in 1812. In 1812, now just think of that. And the reason he did, because the corn shellers in 1812, they would, instead of separating the cob from the, from the kernels of corn, they all put it on the ground, all ground up together, corn and, and cobs. And he didn't like that, so he thought he could figure something out, and he did. He invented a corn sheller in 1845. 1845, he came up with a corn sheller that would separate the cob and the kernels of corn. He's, a, and he's credited for that in the history books. Now, then he came and improved them again, and this is the improved model. This is a number two, patented in 1863. He improved his 1845 model. The improvement was had something to do with the way the cob came out. I'm not sure, and records don't show what it was actually. Yeah, and what got him started, got Thomas Burrell started in, in making corn shell was his hobby was, was growing popcorn. And he wanted something to shell his popcorn. So he that's why he he didn't like the shellers and would put it all together, so he wanted to separate it. So that's what he did, but that's why he started making shellers. And there was other companies in New York that cop actually copied his patent, and he had to, he had lawsuits, and I don't know how they turned out. History doesn't give us all the information, but anyway, the the Gold's Manufacturing Company that made these is still in business today. I don't know if they're making corn shellers anymore, but I know they're making pumps of some kind. But let's run an ear of corn through this and see how this works. This one's got this tube where you drop your corn in. You always, again, you always drop the corn in point first. shoot right here. But I bought this out of a granary the farmer had it in his granary, and it was a neat old granary. In the granary, and I'm going to scrap this, it was, he had a fanning mill, and this was on the, the ground floor of the granary. He had his corn sheller there, he had some feed sacks, but upstairs in the granary was where he would elevate his oats crop. And he'd run the oats crop down in the fanning mill in one chute so he could clean it for oats or feed or whatever. And another chute would take it to a, a, a grinder where he'd grind his oats. It was really neat. And he had this in there and he'd shell his corn for his chickens there. You got to keep feeding it in there. It's, really, yeah, this thing was patented in 1863. Think of that, how old that is. It wasn't the Civil War, didn't it end in 63? I'm not sure. 64. I have to go back and look at history books. But think how they, what an improvement it must have been from standing there and shelling corn by hand to running it through a machine. Amazing what they can do. Well, that's just this one. Cast iron corn sheller. Big old cast, it's heavy. Well, let's move on to another one here. This corn sheller Unlike the burrow, this one is uh, made of wood, wood constructed. And what's interesting about this one, and to me it is anyway, that my uh, my grandfather bought this one. 
he moved up from Iowa, he bought it, and he moved up from Iowa and it was shipped up on a train here to Minnesota, from Osage, Iowa to Minnesota. But anyway, it was all constructed of wood and when I was a kid, when I was a kid I couldn't crank, crank the wheel over to shell corn for the chicken, so my mother would get it going She'd get the, this wheel going. Once the crank got going, then I could get the momentum. The flywheel would help me out so I could crank some corn through it. But anyway, all I did is turn the crank in those days. And we had chickens. Uh, when my parents were farming. Those were the days when the farmers were diversified and they had pigs, chickens, and had milk cows. And, Anyway, it was in bad shape. Uh, the wood was rotted, the legs were rotted off, and, and I replaced the feet. Yeah, but the metal was all good. There was nothing broke on it anyway. Just the wood had rotted. And I see the post, post bores are back in it again now. I have to spray it again. That's the trouble with, with old wood machinery. The powder post beetle gets into it and, and it eats it up. So you got to keep spraying it. But this corn chiller was made by Deer and Weber Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And when I repainted it, I actually had enough lettering on there and coloring so that I could uh, copy it. But it was called the Corn Queen. My grandparents moved to this farm in 1915, but they shipped it up and they farmed south of here. And that was back in... I'm saying 1910, around 1910. So they shipped it up from Iowa and they had it down there. So it was before 1910. So this could, and they were married in the 1890s. So I'm sure it goes back into the late 1800s, or early 1900s, but it is old, it's old. But you know what? It's a quiet running machine. It's an easy cranking machine. Of course, I'm a little older now than I was when I first cranked it. But I can remember my sister and I shelling corn for the whole yard of chickens by hand. You know, it's kind of funny, but I look at this machine and I remember when I was a kid and I was too young and too weak to turn it over by myself. And now I look at it today and I'm getting too old and too weak to crank them over anymore. Very smooth running machine. So that flywheel keeps on going. My dad told me at one time there was a wooden hopper on here where you could put a couple of ears in and run them through. I never saw that. That was gone before my time. Anyway, some of these models also had a little fan down here and the fan would blow the any of the uh, shaft that came down with the, uh, the corn, the corn soaking like that would blow it out. This must have been a strip model because it never had a fan, or if it did, I never saw it. Watch how smooth this goes. That comes out on this side. Flywheel keeps it going. But this was the color, original colors of it was red, black pinstriping, and the Corn Queen sign and the Deer and Weber Company in Minneapolis. That's all the way it was originally. Well, that's the old wood corn sheller. I sure enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. So now we've got different ways to shell corn. We can do it this way. 
We can do it with the old cast iron burl corn sheller, or we can do it with the most modern one, or we can use a little hand corn sheller if we want. Oh, that's hot. Today, if I was going out to buy a corn sheller, I'd probably go on eBay and try to find one on there. And I'd be very careful though buying one there. I'd look for a Black Hawk sheller, which was a real common one if you want an older one. I'd be very careful and made sure it wasn't busted or had all the parts. It'd be nice if you could see it work. Because a lot of times there's parts missing to these things. And the springs and everything are there to hold it together. To get, this is a, the pressure you put on to, to put the corn through. These break easy a lot of times. You have to look and make sure everything is there. And most of them don't have this uh, sheller on the end. But you gotta be careful. But if you find a bigger one, you're gonna pay a whole lot more money. But they're still out there. They're still out there. I see them at antique shows. I see them in, at, I even see them at garage sales once in a while. You've seen a lot of my videos and you know by now that I like the old stuff. And I think the older machines are built better than the newer machines. And but if I was going to buy one today, you can still get the new ones. I, I know that you can go on and look up, I think it's called a Maximizer, still manufactured today. And they're based on the same principle as these old shellers are, and they work good too. But me, I'd, I'd wait and get something with rust on it. It's been laid around for a hundred years. But that's just me. I like old junk. <laughs> well, as you can see, you know by now I'm partial to old corn shellers and old equipment. I really like them. They serve a purpose. They still serve a purpose today. It's something that you can still use if you raise chickens or feed birds. And they're just plain fun to show and let kids enjoy. And I have a good time and I hope that you've enjoyed looking at them. And I hope if you were in it, I hope you can find one if that's what your interest is. We're glad to have you all with us again today, everybody. But now I gotta go cut lawn and, and get this yard cleaned up. So thanks for watching my corn shellers and we'll see you again real soon here on Ozzy's Oddities. Thanks everybody.